So as you can see, and as I'm sure you know, the title of the talk is Religion Versus Freedom. And if you think in American culture, it should be religion and freedom. So there's an idea in the American culture that religion and freedom go together. And the talk is, no, they don't. <coughs> and there's two basic points that I'm going to make. So one is that it's a real problem that these are thought of as going together. That the case for freedom or for free markets or for capitalism is so easy to discredit, to undercut, because it's connected to religion. So you can connect, you can undercut the religious mentality and thereby it's too often thought today, um, and if, if you look at the arguments in the media and in the wider culture, it's too often thought that if you can knock down religion, you knock down the case for capitalism and free markets. So the first thing I want to talk about is that point. I, I want to just make clear how linked they are in popular debates and how easy it is to undercut free markets because of this. Um, and it's particularly, I think, in regard to young people that they see, if they think there's a connection between religion and free markets or religion and freedom or religion and capitalism, they're going to side uh, not with free markets or capitalism. They're going to side because they're going to say they're going to side against religion. And particularly, I think, the better people among the young do that. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit. So that's going to be one point. And then the second point is going to be, well, to look at the alleged connection between religion and freedom. Um, and in particular, the idea that it's put in different kinds of ways, but here's one way, that America is a Christian nation. I'm going to talk about that, and I think it's exactly the opposite. Um, that it, what, and we'll see what it means to say it's exactly the opposite. And I'm going to talk about one major piece of evidence that is advanced for the idea that religion and freedom are linked. Um, so there's a, I'm not, there's a lot to say on this issue. There's no way I can cover it all. But I'm going to address one major argument. Um, and you need to know something about the history of America, which I'm going to talk about a little bit, in order to address that argument. So those are the two major things that I'm going to focus on. So start now with this connection in the culture. And I'm going to start with someone fairly prominent in the culture, Bill O'Reilly. <clears throat> and he's considered, and Fox News Channel is considered to be right-leaning. It's on the side of free markets. It's on the side of capitalism. And now this is an episode, and this episode got a lot of play, particularly on the left, and particularly in things addressed to younger people. <clears throat> this is Bill O'Reilly's famous proof of the existence of God, or maybe infamous. <clears throat> the tide comes in, and the tide goes out. The tide comes in, and the tide goes out. Never a miscommunication. It comes in, and it goes out. You can't explain that. You need a God. And if you Google this, now do it after the talk, but if you Google this, there's, he's, you see him saying this more than once. There's a ton of clips of this is his argument. <clears throat> and what happens? Well, people make fun of it. Here's Colbert, who models himself. I mean, he's a comedian parodying sort of the right wing. He's, one of his major figures that he models himself on is O'Reilly, who he calls Papa Bear. So he had an, oh, he's the, oh, he has a whole episode, a major portion of which is dedicated to, oh, this is O'Reilly's proof of the existence of God. And then he has on, who's a sort of semi-celebrity now, Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> oh, it turns out we can explain the tides. <laughs> it has to do with the moon and gravitation field of the moon. And he has a whole, and this is Colbert then poking fun of, oh, so I guess we have to worship the moon if it's the, what causes the tides. <clears throat> and in the face of this, O'Reilly doubled down. <clears throat> and it was, okay, and I think the word he used, you pinheads. Okay, we know how the tides work, but how'd the moon get there? You can't explain that. 
Therefore, you need a God. <coughs> now, if this mentality that considers this an argument is associated with the right and capitalism, then it is, well, if this is what you have in your repertoire, then your arguments for capitalism, I doubt, are very good. <clears throat> and if, more generally, if the right is willing to put up with this, if he's not laughed out of the right because of this, then it is like, what are you actually about? Do you actually have any arguments for freedom and for capitalism and for free markets? <clears throat> Take it a little more seriously, because this is partly comedic, and Bill O'Reilly, I think, is partly comedic. Um, presidential debates, 2012. These are the candidates on the right. And it's a real question. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this with our, our setup, but does anyone believe in evolution? And it's a real question. Most of them don't in this panel. The big exception was Romney, who thinks God created evolution. <clears throat> but the rest of them, in one way or another, deny it. Now this is, I mean, I view this question as bad as if they asked, does anyone believe in the law of gravity? <clears throat> and the whole idea that it's about belief, that you believe in the law of gravity. You don't need evidence, you don't need arguments, it's not knowledge. Do you believe in it or not? <clears throat> and if this, I mean, this is presidential candidates for the Republicans. And if this is viewed as, well, this is the side, as the Republicans are, the viewed as the side of free markets, of capitalism, of freedom. <clears throat> and it's an open question of whether you believe in evolution. That, uh, particularly in, re in regard to a young person, that is a game breaker. <clears throat> I have a young class of people studying science, and this was definitely true of me. If the choice is, <clears throat> as a young person, as, and you typically as a young person don't know very much about markets or capitalism, aren't particularly interested in comparison to other issues, and if the choice you seem to be presented with is you either side with science or you side with capitalism, freedom, free markets, there, I think the more rational choice is to side with science, by far. <clears throat> and I think that's part of what you see today in the culture, and it's part of what we saw in the 2012 elections. Um, and there was a lot of talk, both on the right but more on the left, uh, and uh, of the liberals and Democrats, of what it means and what the young person vote means. <clears throat> and particularly the um, sort of the science tech people who voted and supported in droves Obama. And here's one thing, and this is Nate Silver, uh, if you know the political analyst. He was with the New York Times at the time, now has his own website. It was compiling data, so these are individual employees' contributions to Obama and Romney in the 2012 election. And because when you give an individual contribution, you have to report your employer, you have this, you can gather this data. And it is 99% of the money from Netflix employees, Obama. 97 from Google, Obama. 91 from Apple, Obama. The total is 83 goes to Obama. And if you think of them, a major element of this is, well, we're on the side of science and tech. We're revolutionizing the world. We're not akin to people who think evolution is a joke. <clears throat> and then if you fold into this the other kinds of views on the right that also have a religious base about abortion and contraception and even immigration, <clears throat> um, then, and that that is sort of the mentality that is too often seen as representing the right than it is, I don't want to be associated with that mentality. So this, I think, is a major, major problem, that it is linked like this in the culture. <coughs> the, the, the way it's put, or the way I would put it, is our culture thinks of it as religion and capitalism go together, and science and the regulatory welfare state go together. And in a choice, particularly for a young person, between these two, he's going to side with science, 
and therefore the regulatory welfare state. And the left makes a huge play of this. One of the things that is in currency now, free market fundamentalism. <clears throat> and the idea is just as their knee-jerk reaction is there can't be any evolution, <clears throat> and it's a fundamentalist, literal in interpretation of the Bible, so their view, the, the left paints it as any problem there is, what the right says is, well, the free market could solve that. And it's the same kind of fundamentalism. We know in advance, we don't have to look at any data and so on. <clears throat> this is our religion. <clears throat> and, they, and the opposite view is then, well, we're about science, and we're about progress, and a progressive government that studies the facts and then intervenes. <clears throat> and so long as this is the way the debate is characterized, I don't think the side that is on capitalism or on freedom can win. <clears throat> it has to be recast. The debate has to be that science and capitalism go together, and that religion, and as I'm putting it here, the regulatory welfare state go together. <clears throat> And, and they, these need to be conceptualized in this form, I think. One is on the side of freedom and progress. So the idea that the liberals and the left have co-opted the idea of progress <coughs> um, is a travesty. There's one system of progress that the world has ever seen, and it's capitalism. It's not tradition-bound, it's not conservative in conservatism, it's not worship of the past, it's a looking to the future and the making the new and the creative. And that's what the system should be seen as, and not tied to this kind of uh, conservative mentality. And on the other side, it should be seen as authoritarianism, and therefore stagnation. <clears throat> and the debate needs to be recast like this, and I'm going to now talk a fair bit about this idea of authoritarianism and the connection of religion to authoritarianism. So, but until I think the debate becomes this, there's no chance for the freedom or free market side to win. Mm -hmm.